starting a new family or starting a family can be incredibly overwhelming just in terms of never mind having to look after a new human being but from the medical aid side from you know what should that be doing for their education all of those different elements so i've hopefully created a roadmap that you can potentially follow and um, to guide you right from the start through to um, having younger kids and looking at education planning and things like that okay so i'll start with the boring stuff um, it's vitally important that you have login and passwords if you are discovery clients um, and make use of the discovery website also the discovery app you can have you use the same login and password for the normal discovery app as as you do the discovery banking app um, and something just to note is that if you do have children on your medical aids that are older than 18 they can even have their own profiles um, we've got our it support number there not our personal it support but the discovery broader it support they can help if you're having any issues with one-time pins passwords all of those kind of things they'll be able to sort out okay so as i mentioned being a new parent can be incredibly overwhelming and we want to try and help you as much as possible so big question we get asked is what is the cover for pregnancies on my plan um, how do i add my newborn as soon as he's born or she's born to the medical aid small semantics like that um, how do I ensure that my child can continue with their schooling if I'm no longer around? Quite an important topic, I think. Uh, and how do we cover our children if, touch wood, they were to suffer from a severe illness diagnosis or a disability event? Um, Discovery has solutions that can help you along the way. So to start off, uh, we have something called assistive reproductive therapy. So this is um, effectively helping uh, with fertility. So it's a benefit that's only available on the executive and comprehensive plans. And you do have to be on those plans for more than 12 months to make use of this benefit. So this is, egg, it involves egg retrievals, egg storage, all of those kind of benefits. And you have cover up to 122,000 Rand per person per year and or up to 75% of the discovery health rate. So they are not gonna be able to cover the full amount, but up to 122,000. Um, so this can be an incredibly costly process, but only those two plans with discovery, the executive and comprehensive offer cover for those benefits. We then move on to the discovery health maternity benefits. So I think um, we get a lot of questions about this. How does it work? What is covered? And I also just want you to note that this is a benefit that you do have to activate. So you need to tell Discovery that you're pregnant and that will automatically activate the benefit. Uh, this can also be done on the app, on the Discovery app or the website or by calling the call center. What's nice about this benefit, and it was actually introduced sure, probably about five years ago or so, is even though you can see on the pyramid that it's part of the day-to-day -day side of things, it does not come from your medical savings. So certain scans, scopes, I'll get into those details um, a little bit later, but it is available on all plans. So no matter what plan you're on, you actually do automatically have this maternity benefit included. It does cover varying degrees in terms of, for example, 12 consultations with a gynecologist GP versus eight that another plan might cover. So it is important to know the maternity benefit specific to your plan. Uh, on your handouts, I have put a QR code link to the, mater the full maternity benefit uh, document, but it is quite extensive. So you can hone in and zoom in on whatever plan you are on in particular. Also, my advice is to clients to submit all of your claims throughout your pregnancy, because if they don't cover it, they will tell you that they're not going to cover it. But there might be something you think is not covered that is actually covered. So that would be my advice to anyone is just submit all of your claims and then possibly track them on your claim transaction history or speak to us if we're your advisor 
and we can help you decipher those claims transaction histories. So the Discovery Health Maternity Benefit includes up to 12 consultations uh, at your gynecologist, GP or midwife. So again, everything is plan specific, but these are the general uh, benefits. So you also have cover for ultrasound scans and parental screening. You're covered for 2D scans. If you're wanting to do 3D or 4D scans, they're covered at the rate that the 2D scans are covered at, and you would have to pay either the remainder from available medical savings, day-to-day -day benefits, or cash. Okay. Um, it also does include a lot of the um, or that that specific genetic testing um, elements. So just double check with your your plan what your plan covers in that regard. You also get a basket of blood tests. So off the top of my head, there's I think it's um, glucose, um, some other different types of like hepatitis, things like that, a basic basket of blood tests that's covered within that benefit. Okay. Um, on the comprehensive and executive plans, you do have private ward cover, so up to a certain amount. Um, however, if you have discovery gap cover and the comprehensive gap cover, that also will cover the private ward. Also, just a side note on the discovery gap cover, you need to have been on a dis or gap cover or a discovery gap cover for 12 months prior to the birth, so or prior to becoming pregnant, because there's an automatic 12 month waiting period on that. So if that is something you're wanting to add on to medical aid, just be aware that there's a 12 month automatic waiting period for pregnancy. Okay. Pre and postnatal care. So this would include, for example, certain classes. Um, I know midwives, doulas, those kind of um, practitioners are covered. And then as well as after the birth, you've got consultations with various nurses, um, lactation specialists, and, and those type of practitioners. Um, there's also a benefit on the essential registered devices. So breast pumps, thermometers, things like that. But again, it's only on comprehensive and executive plans. Okay. Uh, you've got GP and specialist care after birth. So again, being able to go see a doctor, um, pediatrician, ENT, up to certain health rates though. So it's not an unlimited benefit. It is um, covering up to a certain health limit, 100% of the discovery health rate. And you've also got other healthcare services, which I think is really nice because you've got mental health consultations available to you, so with a psychologist, counsellor, things like that, uh, postpartum, um, as well as nutritional assessments um, and nutritional assessments. And I think that is it. Yeah. All right. So that is really the maternity benefit in a nutshell. I've given a bit of a high level understanding of what is covered because some of the elements are plan specific. So, for example, you might not qualify for the registered device benefit, but you do on the comprehensive option. So it's just really important to familiarize yourself with what is covered on your specific plan. Okay, we then have Vitality Baby. So, again, when you find out that you're pregnant, you can activate the Vitality Baby benefit. And this actually gives you some nice vitality perks. Uh, you can double vitality points and as well as your cashbacks at um, pick and pay Woolworths. So you get double points for exercising, higher cashbacks uh, on your healthy foods, and as well as up to 50% back on your purchases at Babies R Us and Discount Baby City. There is a catalog that um, includes the specifics of the items that you can purchase. And then also 50% back at your healthy care partner, which is Clicks or Discam, your preferred partner that you've chosen. So that should help with all the expenses coming your way. Also a really cute benefit is that you get a package, a Vitality Baby package from Babies R Us. There's, I have put the information in the handout on how to get that, but effectively you just go onto the Discovery website, 
you get a code SMS to you and you just go to your nearest Babies R Us and there's a cute little package there. It's got like little books and uh, bottles, um, dummies, those kind of things. So it's quite a nice little perk. Okay. So this is a relatively new benefit um, and that is banking your stem cells at birth. So this is something that's done with the stem cells in the umbilical cord. Uh, and the understanding behind that is that those cells will be an exact true match should something touch wood, hopefully not, happen um, to your little one. And they need, for example, bone marrow transplants, those kind of things. So stem cells are incredibly important. So there's no risk of rejection if they're transplanted. Um, Discovery have partnered with Next Biosciences and their product is called Net Cells. And effectively, we offer you certain discounts on banking those cells, uh, stem cells, as well as the initial upfront costs and all of that. So it's just something to be aware of. That is our partner. There are a few, obviously, on the scene. Um, so a nice opportunity to get some discount there. Excuse me, how much does that cost? I'm not sure off the top of my head, but it is quite costly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would imagine anywhere from 10 to 20,000 Rand, somewhere along those lines, up front. And then I think there's also a monthly cost involved to store the stem cells. Okay. All right, then adding your little bundle of joy to the Discovery Medical Aid Plan. It's an incredibly smooth process, but we do encourage this to be done within the first 30 days um, just to avoid any claim issues or things that could occur. So you would contact us as your financial advisor with the ID number of your baby, the name of your baby, and we're able to upload it on our system, send you a one-time pin, you give us that one-time pin and baby's added, it's that simple. No forms or anything cumbersome like that. Okay, so it's a relatively smooth process. So that's it in terms of the medical benefits on, relating to medical aid on um, the, the maternity side. I'm now going to move over to now that your child has arrived, how do we make sure that their education is protected going forward if something were to happen to you? So I've put this great quote up by Nelson Mandela, education is the key to unlocking the world, it is a passport to freedom. So Discovery have a benefit called the Global Education Protector. And this will ensure that your child can still go through entire schooling career if you are no longer around. So it's an award-winning benefit that um, Discovery has created a few years ago. And uh, in a later slide, you'll see the, the benefit of inaction, if I can say it as that. So just some details on the Global Education Protector. We can actually cover for the main member and a spouse on one policy. And we cover for death, so if you were to pass away, disability uh, event or a severe illness diagnosis. So any of those trigger events, we can actually cover education experiences from creche until a university level degree, or if they want to do a creative diploma, so any sort of tertiary education. Okay, You can add this to an existing Discovery Life policy or to a new Discovery Life policy, or it can be a standalone benefit. For now, um, things might change as our systems and quoting um, processes are changing. You get three different types of options with regards to the Global Education Protector. You get a core benefit that will only cover for government schooling, you get a private benefit, which obviously covers for private schooling, and you have a dollar-based option. So that would cover schooling internationally. Um, I actually, we wanted a colleague of ours who sits in the back. She, um, her, unfortunately, her husband passed away and her kids were still at school. She managed to put her son through Hilton, so they didn't pay the full amount because it is a very expensive school, but she managed to put her son through Hilton and through tax, um, and her daughter is also now finishing up at tax soon. So 
seeing a real value there. Um, she has seen the real value in that policy. I think another really good benefit, um, in my opinion, is that Discovery Life will actually pay to the school directly or the institution directly. The funds are not paid out to a guardian or something like that, and they have to pay the funds over. Um, it's, we deal directly with the institution, so you have that peace of mind that should something happen to you, that schooling is taken care of. Uh, and I think it's, it's quite scary, but the total cost of private education could exceed 5 million rand for an average family, which is very scary. <laughs> so just to continue on the global education protector, uh, there's cover, you get a lump sum cover for benefits like technology items, school trips, um, university residency, uh, uniforms, all of those little extras that add up over and above just the base of school fees. So school fees, sure, are expensive, but it's also as soon as you start adding everything else on top of it, it becomes quite exorbitant. The nice benefit of the Global Education Protector is that there is a, something called a university funder benefit. So if you engage with vitality over the term and you don't claim on that benefit, so your son is now 18 years old and nothing's happened to you, thank goodness, he wants to go to university, we will look at your engagement with vitality over the last few years or however long you've had the policy and we can cover up to 100% of those university education expenses. So it's a real motivator on the vitality side, but also giving you something out if you haven't necessarily used the benefits as yet, so that there's, there is still some use out of the policy. Something that's also really awesome about the, the plan is that we can actually cover for international universities. So I'm not sure if you can read here, but we've got Brown University, um, London School of Economics, I think I saw. Uh, University of College, sorry, University College of London, you've got Harvard. So those are all universities that we can actually cover on this benefit. Okay. I wanted to share this slide with you. We recently had a, a claims presentation from 2023 on Discovery's average claims um, across all our benefits. So at the moment, we have 34,714 children currently covered on an individual policy. It's also something to note that if you have a just group discovery life policy, you actually have this benefit. So you've got this benefit and that's totally separate in terms of the number of people who are covered under this. So 598 children are currently receiving payouts for this benefit. We've got 69 million rand paid in total under the Global Education Protector in 2023 alone. Expected education cost for those currently claiming 527 million rand. So some scary figures there, uh, but just to show you the absolute value that this benefit has. This is also a slide that I've stolen from them, but it's just to show you a comparison of why would I take out this policy? Why shouldn't I just save money every month? You need to save an average 750 rand a month just to cover the tertiary education expenses. If you want life cover, straight life cover, traditional life cover, that would cover those education expenses, that premium would cost you around 1,200 rand per month. The Discovery Global Education Protector Premium is starts at around 300 grand per month. So it is the most effective way to fund tertiary expenses as well as um, cover for the educational expenses if you were to pass away or become disabled or severely ill. Okay. Any questions there? That is what I have to say on the Global Education Protector, um, I'm sure you can understand why the benefit has actually won multiple international awards. So it's really something that you can't find with other providers um, and is quite unique to Discovery. Sorry. Yes. So when you say um, it must be, um, what's that? Um, 
<laughs> vitality active. Oh, engaged with vitality, yes. Yeah, so you're saying I must be like doing all those things that need to be done for vitality. So effectively, you would want to get to diamond every year for to guarantee the 100% pound. And there's no stages in terms of maybe I'm not on diamond, but I'm in a... So if you're on gold, it's just a, a lesser power. It's not quite 100%. Let's say it's 75% and it goes down accordingly. So even if you remain on blue, you would probably still be able to fund, let's say, 35% of the tertiary education. Who specifically needs to be on that status? The Everyone family. Or? The family. So vitality membership is, is combined. Um, oh, okay. So um, another question I had was, um, is this dependent on when you join or is so it is, so it, the, the tertiary educational university benefit is dependent on how old the kids are when you joined. Yeah. So if they are 15, as an example, they're not going to cover the 400%. It's proportionate. So my advice is the younger you can get them on it, the better. Yeah. So to get, to get onto this urban education projector thing, have you got to pay extra into your extra into something or just what you do? So it's a premium that's attached either to a discovery life policy or you can have it as a standalone policy. And how much does that cost a month? So I, it starts from about 300 rand per month, but because it's a risk policy, we underwrite you as a person. So we look at factors. Do you smoke? Um, healthy habits? Do you have any pre-existing conditions? All of those kind of things determine the premium. But does this only kick in if you die or in any case? So if you pass away, become severely ill or disabled, it kicks in. But then there's the university funder benefit if you haven't claimed on the policy that funds the university education. Okay. Does that make sense? But you have got to have been on, on that specific cover in order to be... To, for your children to be covered. So you have to take out this as an extra? As an extra. Yes, yeah. On a life policy or as a standalone benefit. Mm -hmm. So is there um, like a, a premium that puts everything together or it's just say I've got a life with mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. and I went through well, well, maybe I had it before this was the mm -hmm. when I add this on. Yes. Is it just for saving or I need to really like, I'll have to have saving and then um, the one that when I pass away? No, no. So it's just the 300 grand is your policy. This is just to show in comparison to, for example, if you wanted to save just for university expenses, it will cost you 750 per month in order to cover those fees. Whereas the Global Education Protector covers all of that in one policy for about 300 rand per month, starting, let's say starting at 300 rand per month. Depending on your lifestyle. Depending on your lifestyle, risk factors, things like that. Do you smoke? Like as if you're applying for a normal life policy, they'll do those medical mm -hmm. underwriting questions. So does that depend on how old the child is taking off? <laughs> Only the university funder benefit depends on how old the child is when you take the policy out. So if the child really 16 and you're taking it out, then Well, then it's only going to cover for potentially two, two, two years until they're 18. Yeah. Yeah. But then what about the tertiary education? So it, uh, that's when they get to the university funder benefit. So if you haven't used the benefit, then the university funder benefit kicks in to contribute towards the university so expenses. The longer you have been on this, then the better. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Do you guys call the parents to say, look, you haven't used this, you qualify now? For so the, Discovery uh, will reach out automatically. When your child yes. is 18. Yes. So yeah. you actually qualify. Yeah. Okay. That's nice. <laughs> yes. And hypothetically, so realistically, not all kids would go to Mars University. Sure. When you do up to 18 years of paying for it and they don't have that. You had it up. Yeah, <laughs> so it's, a, it's not necessarily only universities, so it's all tertiary type of institutions. So um, even if it's a creative type, a graphic design school or a more um, hands on, let's say, like a plumbing qualification, as long as it's a tertiary type of institution. But there's no pay cash payout if they decide that they don't want to study. Okay. <laughs> now, what does it cover then? 
university degree. Like, it's so it covers an undergraduate university like degree or equivalent? Like degree, accommodation, like other fees. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So those are the extra benefits that you can claim um, from the policy. Yeah. Okay. Is there a reason why you just cover undergraduate and not honors? Honors. Um, I would have to ask the actuaries. Uh, I think that's technically the standard that gives you a degree at the end of the day, if that makes it's sense. Like a metric now. <laughs> it's true, it's true. <laughs> I'll, I'll suggest that they look at that. Because I, I do agree, yeah. I do agree. So, just speaking to you, how does a standard loan policy or what is it? It's linked to your dis existing discovery life policy or a new discovery life policy. Okay, is that it on the Global Education Protector? And can grandparents take this out or only parents? So only parents. Okay. Yeah, you can pay for it, but uh, we have to insure their lives. Okay. For, we insure them for death, disability. Okay. And if they're not insured with um, discovery, then they'll be standalone? Yeah. And how much is the standalone part? So from 300 Rand. Similar premium. It's slightly cheaper when it is linked to a existing discovery life policy, um, but marginally. Okay. We then unfortunately see instances of children suffering from childhood cancers, traumatic events, injuries, things like that. So how do we now protect them? You might personally have life cover, disability, severe illness. But should something happen to them, there's also financial impacts, um, as well as medical expenses that are possibly not covered, time of work, all of those kind of things. So Discovery have created a benefit called the Child Protector Benefit. So the Child Protector Benefit is also an add-on to an existing Discovery Life Policy. You can't have it as a standalone benefit. And effectively, you're ensuring the children should something happen to them in terms of severe illness diagnosis, traumatic disability event, um, ICU visits, bone fractures, burns, um, a whole list of different types of events. Uh, it's a really powerful benefit and it's incredibly cost effective. Um, for example, 100,000 Rand cover for about less than 100 Rand a month. So we can cover up to 6.4 million Rand uh, and your typical insurers will only cover up to about 100. So if you wanted to insure the children for 2 million Rand, should something happen to you, you can. So, but how do they determine that it's like, how do they determine who the, the child, how do yeah. they determine the price of It's just determined by age. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And there's also a built-in funeral cover for the children who are covered under this benefit, up to 30,000 Rand. So it's legislated that funeral cover can only pay certain amounts according to different ages. Um, so when they're 18, for example, 30,000 Rand funeral cover built into that. So this is a very nice benefit. Um, it doesn't get spoken about enough on Discovery's offering. Uh, but incredibly important if you do have children, young children, that you put something like this in place. Because we always encourage parents who've got kids who just turned 18 to take out a policy that covers them for disability events because it's those kids at that age that are potentially could face something traumatic like car accidents, all of those kind of things. So um, it's really a benefit that we encourage adding on to the policy. Okay. So that's it on the child protector benefit. I then also just wanted to touch on in terms of investing in your child's future. So uh, it was actually Shirley that came up with an amazing idea for her nephew, I think, um, where she took out an investment, a small investment, and put the banking details there so that people at a birthday, first birthday party could contribute to that. And I think that's an ingenious idea of actually, instead of getting 20 toys, rather have some money there that can build over time. Because as Albert Einstein said, compound interest is the eight one of the world. So it's really important to get something started for them uh, from an early age. Uh, this is also uh, the 
graph on the side, proportion of people saving for education or that have an education policy in place over the last few years, um, which is quite scary. And this is South African statistics. So really need to, needing to focus on that. Um, I think also bearing in mind that education inflation is quite a bit higher than normal inflation. I'm sure you'll see your school fees are jumping 10% every year or even more than that now, rather than inflationary linked. Um, same with medical inflation. So quite important to, to get some grounding for them. Um, we did a presentation, ooh, loud motorbike. We did a presentation um, last year actually on tax free investments and the use of them. So tax free investment can also be a nice way of contributing for a child because you can take one out for when they start. We would probably suggest contributing a smaller amount so that they can still make use of the tax free investment in their adulthood, but a very nice investment to use and to, I mean, there's no tax once they withdraw from that kind of benefit. So something to create a legacy, maybe not necessarily for education, but to create a legacy for your children. Okay. Yes. How does that work though, if how did you start with that and what, a few years that you immigrate, how does that work with the tax? So the tax free investments are totally free of tax. So you can withdraw the funds. We just have to pay those funds into a bank account in the policy holder's name. So in your child's name. So you might have to create a bank account for them and you just withdraw those funds. It's a hundred percent tax free on withdrawal. Okay. So on the tax free point of this topic, every single person in South Africa should have a tax free and maximize on that because um, it's your only chance to have anything tax free. So use it um, and it can be really worthwhile in the end if you do contribute your maximums. Okay. So really in summary, I just want to say, you know, we are here to help. This can be a daunting time in your life. Um, so you've got lots of benefits and options available to you. Um, and we are here to hold your hand. So I think something that's also quite important is to understand the costs um, if you are thinking about having children, understand the cost of birth. Uh, a lot of doctors charge upfront for the procedure. So you could be paying 40,000 Rand upfront out of pocket, even for a standard natural birth. So be aware that you might have these large upfront costs. Yes, that you can claim back from your medical aid, but there's a bit of planning involved in that. Okay. And then I think from our side as financial planners is, would be to focus on the protection of the education as well as the savings. So having something like a global education protector, but also having an investment that's complementary to that. Okay, so that's it from me. I'd like to say thank you guys so much for being here in attendance and for those online, we really appreciate it. Keep an eye out for our next last Thursday of the month club for May. Um, we are still to decide on a topic. So I don't know if any of you guys maybe have a suggestion on something you'd like to hear more about in terms of planning um, or anything discovery related. Anything? I think talking about geriatric care would be a really good idea. Okay. There are so many elderly people that are in the brain now because they haven't got savings and they, yeah. this is when they need that money most of all. Absolutely. I don't know what one can do about it, but and especially because you know um, if you have if, if you go to a home or a retirement place or something mm. like that, your your medical aid doesn't cover that. No, so and, and maybe, maybe yeah. there should be some sort of insurance for when when you have to go into a home. Yeah, I have a friend overseas in America, and she says, luckily her husband's got dementia. Luckily, they had some scheme which covers his his um, dementia treatment mm. in, in the facility, yeah. which we don't have in this country. Yeah. So there are some at-home care benefits linked to the medical aid. Estelle and Rafilwe would be best versed on that, but um, frail care is an exclusion. So on on most of the plans. So yeah, and something to be in mind. Yeah. yeah. But that would be a very good topic because mm. there are so many of, well, of your friends and my friends that are in this situation. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we're not there yet, hopefully. 
<laughs> no, not at all. No. He has grandma's like, like, grandma four, maybe two, three weeks back. Now we have that situation, and then all of a sudden as well. Yeah. So, it's very scary. They have a really good home care program for that. Discovery. And it's yeah. education. Yeah. So they are, yeah, they have made some advancements in the last like launch that we had in March, April, February, March, um, with some conditions qualifying for home care um, rather than you being in a hospital. Because a lot of people are more comfortable at home actually and having nurses rather come and attend to you at home. So definitely something we could possibly focus on. I would like I'd love to have home care, but I'd like to know what or they are. Yeah. It's the policy I have. Yeah. Have to have yeah. Okay. Something to definitely consider. We'll take that to the table, to the brainstorm table. Sorry. Yes. Okay. How do we get it down? It's my first time here with those. Home care. Yeah. Is it coming with your life or your. No, it's linked to Discovery Health. It's linked to Discovery Health. Yeah. And it's very it's, limited. It's, it's limited. It's very limited. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, it's a big problem because um, the crowd gets to come so it's yeah. people can't afford it. Yeah. And um, so <coughs> we have um, we have problems with having to contact people in, in just down the road here at home who can't look after themselves. Yeah. And there's just no way that you can go in anywhere. You have to really look at under the moment try to find a place for an old man with very limited finds. Mm. It's just so yeah. difficult to get the care you need. You must see that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's something which an innovative company like Discovery yeah. would perhaps be able to with something like that. Yeah, totally. I think it also comes back to our retirement planning. So when we do retirement planning with a lot of younger individuals, we make sure that they can, first of all, still afford their medical aid because medical aid inflation is high, but also that there's enough sufficient income there we're living much longer uh, the life expectancy of someone with vitality is about 15 years above the average okay. of some of a normal south african <laughs> so sorry meg you're gonna be a while <laughs> okay guys thank you very much no thank, thank you, you.